All right. Good morning. Good evening. Um, good night. A good late night. Hope all is well out there in Radio Land. Um, I'm still Jason. This is still Architecture 530 Environmental Systems 1. Um, and this is Lecture 10 on Attenuation. And we're wrapping wrapping it all up, getting ready for um, doing an analysis of sound isolation and doing an analysis of background noise. Um, and then we're done. Then we're done with um, the acoustics audio video control portion with a heavy in emphasis on the mechanical noise portion. All right, so let's get started. Um, we want to attenuate. We want to prevent noise um, in our space by either making the noise producing sources in our space quieter, or we want to limit noise getting into our space. Um, We've got increasing distance, decreasing the level, and adding a barrier. Um, we went over decreasing the level. We went over adding the barrier. Um, now we're circling back to the first one, probably the most beneficial one, um, is increasing the distance. And it's pretty straightforward. It's similar to um, adding levels together. Um, but before we wrap up, let's do a quick review. Um, Anytime we're talking about noise, it's ex excessive or unwanted sound, which could result in annoyance and or hearing loss. Um, sound, a change in pressure, so that's the wave that travels um, through air. That's the medium that is heard, detected by a human ear. So we've got pressure, and we've got the sensation in the human ear um, through the air. Sound pressure, it's the more viable um, way to measure sound pressure, similar to power intensity, but it's not the same, and you don't want to compare power level to pressure level, um, and it's measured by using a microphone. This is force per unit area. Then we've got the perception of sound, um, and we can describe this perception objectively if we use decibels for amplitude and hertz for frequency. Our range is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Um, and the dB is a log based scale that um, tracks um, human hearing acuity and it compresses that range from 0 to 140 dB. Um, and then we've got our octave bands, quantify frequencies without looking at each frequency. It's a standardized notation. Um, we can use octave bands to start to characterize what something sounds like and what the noise is. If it's at the 63, 125, the lower frequencies, it's warmer, it's got more depth. Um, that's the base region. If it's at 4K, 8K, um, 16K, or 4K, 8K, 10K, um, it's brighter, it's tinnier. Um, it gives a little bit more uh, energy, might be a little bit cooler or colder. And these are characterized by the center frequencies for uh, octaves, which is 31 and a half, 62, 125, 250, 500, 1K, 2K, 4K, 8K, 16K. Should have that to memory by now. Um, and remember, a lot of times we're looking at 125 to 4K, sometimes 250 to 2K on there. So we want to be mindful of which ones we're looking at and what we're trying to solve. Um, so we can increase the distance, we can decrease the level we can add a barrier on this. So another example um, of the difference between power and pressure, so watts versus pascals, um, power is coming out of the unit. Once it gets into um, the space, then that's where we have the fluctuations caused by the power that this unit is putting off. So you've got basically three paths you have the supply side, you have the return side, and then you have the casing production. So the casing are these two. Um, and remember, if you're going to put a uh, silencer or attenuator on, you want to put it as close to the unit as possible. Nine times, maybe 9.9 .9 times out of 10, the supply side 
is a higher level than the return side. And it makes sense because the fan's pushing this way. So the majority of momentum and mass in terms of air molecules are moving that way um, and pushing that out. And then because this area is pressured, it takes less to pull this back in. So it's pretty pretty intuitive on that point. Uh, bigger, bigger picture here of that. Um, we also have our go-to standard um, with the five paths. This one would be return air. This would be casing. This would be supply side. Remember, this is sound isolation here. Once we get in here, now we're talking about mechanical noise control or background noise. But all five of these figure into the NC curve. If we have this set um, at the level that we want um, and work through that, and this is good, but we have not addressed the isolation, then our NC still fails. Our noise criteria, our background noise still fails. So we've got to do both. And we've got to take care of all of this before we do any architectural acoustics aspects. So the the trump card that we have is increasing distance. And picking up on this last, um, this is this is the best aspect. Um, if we look at a uh, air cooled chiller with the um, sound pressure in the environment, um, to know what the level is here, um, usually we base that off of a reference off of three feet here, and that gives us our pressure level. Or we can take power from this unit and calculate it as if it's going uniformly out. Now, all bets are off if we put a big wall right here and all the power bounces off this wall and comes over here too. We're basically adding two sources at that point. Um, so we need to be mindful of that, of what um, information we're using. Likewise, if we took a reference of pressure measurement here in the field um, and we assumed that we could double this distance and lose 6 dB, as illustrated here. Um, that's not necessarily the case if there's a big wall here because we're going to push this energy over also. So it would be closer, if we double the distance, it would be closer to losing 3 dB because we would um, be actually attenuating from this point here 6 dB if we double the distance, but then we're adding sources together. Um, so that would be a uh, rule of thumb rough way to do that. So increasing the distance, every time we double distance, we get to subtract 6 dB. This is, this is the benefit. Um, this is why you need a lot of power in a loudspeaker if you want to throw out further. Um, that means these people get their heads blown off. Um, it was really loud. So if we're trying to make this 90, or back here, we want this 90 dB. Um, we've got 6 and six is 12, so if it's 90 here, it has to be 102 here. It's getting pretty loud at that point. So this is the base of the inverse square law. Um, if you want to, um, if you're not doubling a distance, um, the log equation is SBL2 is SBL1 minus 20 uh, log D1 over D2 fraction. Um, and that will give us, if we were doing power, if we were adding two sor sources, SBL1, SBL2. So SBL2 would be SBL1 minus 10 log. That's where the 3 comes from. So 3 for adding sources, 6 for doubling distances. And um, if we look back at this chart from earlier, not earlier this lecture, but earlier when we were doing this, um, we can see that we're spreading this out as we move out. So as we go 1R to 2R, now we're spreading what was all on one is now across this surface. And we can figure out that surface, how much that surface is, um, by figuring out the surface uh, of the sphere. Or we can just use rule of thumb, double the distance, 6 dB. If we're um, unsure, and um, instead of moving 1 meter, we're moving 2.25, we can plug that in if we need to. So this is our sphere. That's our distance. So now, why don't we increase the uh, uh, the distance of this um, all the time? We have we have limitations. We have space. 
<clears throat> sometimes we can't make the space bigger. The program says um, that we are have to have a certain amount of um, square footage. We can't move it somewhere. Maybe we can't put it outside. Um, the issue at Leap 2 um, for the mechanical system that's on the roof there, they had to shroud it. Once they put it outside, then all the neighbors complained that they were um, getting noise in. Location. Maybe they, it just can't go there, right? You can't just put mechanical equipment anywhere. Um, let's say you have a music performance space on the first floor. Um, on the second floor, you have offices. And so the idea would maybe put the mechanical on the third floor. That means all the structure on the third floor, second floor, and first floor have to get bigger. Um, and so that might not be an option. Might, might not be able to do that. Might not have the space up, up top. Um, and most importantly is, is usually cost because as you move this distance, as you move this away, you're um, increasing how much ductwork you have, how much insulation you have, how much wrapping you have, how much coordination, who can go there and who can't go there. Maybe you can't move this mechanical room um, over across the hallway because if you do, you can't get across because there's a structural beam running on that other side that you can't cut into. And then it requires more equipment. As you increase the distance, you're going to increase the static pressure. As you increase the static pressure, you're going to need bigger fans. As you need bigger fans, it gets louder. But for the most part, the most efficient way to decrease um, noise into a room is increase that distance. Next is adding the barrier and then decreasing the level. So it, one thing to note, um, increasing the distance improves this path, this path, this path, this path, and this path. Adding a barrier only um, improves these three passes. Decreasing the level increases this path, this path, this path, this path, and this path. So we want to we want to think about that. If we do add a barrier and we want to improve this path, we add a barrier here, it's still cut here. So we still have to fix this issue. But um, your, your biggest bet is uh, moving distance and then maybe trying to change the level and then adding the barrier and then fixing the acoustics of the space. Um, because if, if we need based, we can't move distance and we, um, we can't change this from being 100 and move it down 10, then we're in this specialty construction. This regular construction won't work. Um, and there is a price increase. The difference between this STC 36 wall and this 39 wall is minimal in general. Um, it's really a price of a little bit of labor and a little bit of product, but the technique's the same. This is a totally different technique, and then this is just a, way, a lot more um, material and a lot different technique. So if we could, um, if you remember, we we're at 100 dB here. We need to be at 55 on the other side so we need a 45 wall if we need to use regular construction we need 9 db that means we need to double the distance once and then double it about 1.75 let's just go two so we have an extra th 3 db in there so if we double the distance twice we get our um we get our 12 um, and this hits us up to 48 which is over the 45. It's not quite as high um, as we want, because remember we want to be five, but at least it's closer. And then if we add the insulation, then that, that solution should work fine. Um, increase distance, decrease the uh, level, change what the unit type is, um, reconfigure the ductwork based on size, type, length, the material, um, pick a better diffuser, Something that has a lower NC, because um, this is what the mechanical is going to look at. Look at these NC ratings here. Um, so pick a bigger one of those. We're going to slow down the air, which means the ductwork is going to get bigger. If the ductwork gets bigger, um, we can change, we can attenuate the level because we can get a smaller fan. We don't have to have as much static pressure. But then if we increase that distance, we've got bigger duct, we're increasing the price. So there is a constant balance of 
um, robbing Peter to pay Paul. And then once we've explored increasing the distance, adding a barrier, decreasing the level, then we apply the architectural acoustics to that. Um, depending what's going on here, maybe our option is we have to do that double wall because we got we have to isolate um, this bass guitar from this space, right? And so that's made the decision for us. Maybe we need to just decrease this level in this room by 3 dB. means we can put acoustic panels on there. So instead of putting insulation in this wall, we can put it surface mounted on here and bring the level of this total room down by 3 dB. might get us close enough. And that wraps up um, attenuation overview. Um, so w with those steps, with those ideas, thinking about it, where you want to be now is to be able to describe a space. Is it good or bad? And then what can I do? Can I make a thicker wall? Is what I'm hearing, is it um, the room next door, whatever they're playing, and is that because the wall is thin or is that because the door is thin or the window is thin or is that because the, the wall doesn't go all the way to ceiling and the ceiling's um, lightweight? Um, if it's a refrigerator, for example, or a washer dryer, that's the issue. Let's say in the morning um, you need to be on a Zoom call and somebody wants to do laundry and that shares a common um, wall with you. Can you move that source away? Or can you move where your receiver room is? Can you change your room to be further away from that when it's being used? These are the um, type of broad schematic design aspects that you want to look at when you're describing their, your space. Um, can I increase the distance? Can I do something about the barrier, make the wall different? Um, can I decrease the level somehow? And then you get to the part um, that the podcaster said, let's add some foam panels. Right. That should be your last one. That should not be your first decision. So next we will do um, we'll do transmission losses um, for a space. So we'll add some numbers to it, put some goals in. Um, and then we will do uh, background noise on mechanical systems. All right. Stay humble and stack those sats. Good night, Radio Land. <laughs>